Now, the Ice Lords, that's another question. What do you mean? Only that sometimes you have to try to chop off the head, you know? That bunch of walking corpses wouldn't be any trouble at all if there was no one to guide them. I guess you're right, but I don't think that makes the task any simpler. There was a time way back, you know, when there were so many of us in the company, several hundred, that the captain decided to delegate. So he chose two lieutenants. Those two assholes fought over how to share out the men for weeks. They both wanted to take the best men for their group. And the result? We had our asses handed to us by an army that was hardly more numerous than we were. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the dead walkers are just the same. You've got seven bosses, and each one of them wants to control everything. So if we were able to set them against each other... Now you're thinking straight. I don't know how we could do it, but I'm sure that it's possible. See you later. Sybil, can I talk to you? Yes? I'd like to ask you a few questions. What do you want to know? So then, any result from the study of all these creatures of the swamps? I have discovered a few things about the small chrysalids. They are much faster, but it seems that they can only attack from close up, using their pinchers. I also noticed that the medium-sized chrysalids were slower than small ones, but they, however, can fire tiny projectiles. The sickles have a power that depends on their growth. The biggest ones are the most dangerous. Up close, their attacks can be frenetic and extremely dangerous. They can also leap onto their prey. Respect, General, sir. Do I look like a general? Uh, I don't know, General, sir. If I'm asking you that, it probably means that I'm not. Well, it could be a test to see if I'm being a good soldier, General, sir. Then you flunked the test. You are crap at recognizing rank. They never taught me that, General, sir. Plus, I don't see so good, General, sir. Is there a boss guard to help you with that? Yes, General, sir. He posted me here and said to deal with it, General, sir. This village is condemned, and without a doubt it is better than us. All right, we're not going to waste all day on this, and stop calling me General, sir. My name is Vulcan. Uh, understood, General Vulcan, sir. I suggest you roll with it. Congratulations on your promotion, General. Yeah, thanks. Whatever. Forget about it, soldier. I would like you to give me some information about the village. What do you think of the boss guard? General, sir, boss guard Mason, he is a good boss. He is, uh, competent and, uh... Be honest, soldier. The one thing I hate is a liar. It's just I don't want any trouble, General, sir. You won't get any. I'm asking you this because I trust you, and nobody else will ever know. Well, okay, General, sir. Because the thing is, well, Boss Guard Mason, I guess I don't think he is a very good boss, General, sir. He insults us all the time and never shows us how to do nothing. He spends all his time drinking like a chamber pot instead of doing his patrols. Drinking like a chamber pot? Please, I don't even want to know. Thanks for the information, 
It'll stay just between us. What do you think about the steward? The steward? Well, I don't know much about him, General, sir. But before the war, when he took care of the hunting lodge, he used to come and buy vegetables from my grandparents. But they didn't like him much. He always spoke to them like he thought they was scum. All these refugees, are they causing any trouble? Well, it's true, there is a lot of them. So that means a lot more work for us. Sometimes one of them will try to sneak in and steal some food, but we don't ever let them do that. And then again, we can't get too mad at them either. It's all because of the war. Most people are just like us, more or less, except that they lost everything. And sometimes they help us, too. A couple have even joined the guard when the boss thought they were good enough. Plus, there's Renko. Well, he fixed up my granddad's spade. He's a real nice guy, that one. I see. You stand in front of the swamps every day. You must know a lot about them, right? Oh, not that much, General, sir. I never set foot out there. It's way too dangerous. Boss Mason posted me at this here gate, and that is just fine with me. There's lots of monsters out there. I can hear them, and that's enough for me. And even when there's no noise, we hear the whispering and the... Well, that's even worse. The whispering? Yes, General, sir. Sounds like my own mama's voice sometimes. Except that she's been dead these past five years. Plus, I can't make out one word she's saying. And that don't make no sense. Mama and me always understood each other. Huh. I see. Let's change the subject. See you later, soldier. Here we go. Another one of these hick refugees. There's nothing for you here. Call me a hick one more time, and I'll be using your face as an anvil. Uh, let's all remain calm, shall we? Please forgive my error. With all this commotion and all the thankless tasks I find myself confronted with, I often find my attention to detail slips. So, what can I do for you? I need more info about Valdenor. And you have decided that I have a sympathetic face. It's the story of my life. Talent worthy of a king's ransom, but surrounded by cretins who only seek that which is free. What can you tell me about the steward? Oh, don't expect me to say anything bad about Bert Hoff Chambriad. I'm not always in agreement with him, but I can see that he knows his business. And he keeps the village relatively safe. It's not often you see an elf blending in with other cultures. Are there many of you here in Valvanor? To my knowledge, I was the only one. That is, until Prince Arundel and his acolyte arrived. Does that pose a problem for you? Not at all. Well, it does for me. 
His Majesty the Prince of Imbeciles is going to bring us nothing but trouble. Do you know the woman who runs the healing house? Oh, of course. She's all one hears about lately. Everyone here will tell you that she's a courageous woman fighting a noble battle. Everyone but me. The woman's insane. There are already far too many mouths to feed in this camp. Clearly, she's fully aware of this, yet she stubbornly insists on making things worse. And the Red Scribes? Know anything about them? No, oh, certainly. A boring bunch of fusspots, spreading science and preaching the good word while never suspecting that anyone might see through their little game. Our game? Well, pray tell. Give us the details. Please, give us the benefit of your extensive knowledge. I don't pretend to know about all their little plots. I spend very little time with them, and frankly, I couldn't possibly care less about them. But I am fully aware that pretty speeches serve no better purpose than manipulating minds. They're nothing more than noisy masks behind which hides a reality that is far uglier. The more the melody is sweet, the better it distracts you. And is there anything more disgustingly melodious than the discourse of a red scribe? When it comes to disgusting discourse, you seem to be something of an expert. Let's talk about something else. Show me what you have for sale. Ah, uh, gold. So vulgar to work with. So wonderful to own. My goodness, let's see. You're not pissing blood, you're not vomiting your guts out. Both legs are in place and they seem to be holding you upright. Congratulations, it looks like you'll pull through. And now you'll excuse me, but I have other miracles to accomplish, and not much time to devote to people in your condition. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I'd like to speak with you. Are you wounded? No. Are you a refugee dying of starvation? Hey. I'm a mercenary. We're always hungry. Why don't you go roast a Chris alien and come back and see me when you're twisted in pain? You again? I told you I'm very busy. Now leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> 